in Shar B'Tochen, in the gate of trust. So the author says like this, the Chavis of says like this. If a person doesn't put their trust in Hashem, automatically they're putting their trust in man. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss what that actually means. If you don't trust Hashem, you don't trust, if you don't trust a God, you're going to trust other human beings. When a person Trusts others. Hashem takes off kaviyachal as if the hashgacha, the divine providence of this person. What does it, what does it actually mean? Is as follows. There is a big conversation in the early commentators in the Rishonim. How does the hashgacha work? How does the idea of divine providence work? There's something that's called hashkocha kalalis, which is like a general providence. And then there's something that's called hashkocha pratias, which is particular providence. So for example, let's say I say, I need you to do this work for me. Let's say you're an owner of a factory and you make sweaters, okay? You have a sweater factory, and you tell your, your worker, your employee that, employer that, employee that, that you need to make five sweaters for me every day. Okay. I don't really care, and I'm the owner of the company, I don't really care how much time you spend making them. I would assume that it takes about, let's say, you know, an hour and a half, and that would be the whole day to make five sweaters. But if you do them quicker, um, and you're able to produce five sweaters in three hours or four hours, so then do whatever you want the rest of the day. At the end of the day, I need you to come and show me that you have five sweaters that were made for me. This is a type, an analogy of this idea of Ashkoch HaKlalis, a general providence, which means I don't care about the details of how you make it, I don't care in which times you make it, so long as at the end of the day, I get my five sweaters, I'm okay. That's Ashkacha Klawas. That's a general, a general Ashkacha, a general providence. And we say that Hashem is mashkiach, Hashem is, observes the world, and has providence over the creation. The way the early Rishon, the way the early commentators, specifically the Rambam, in the, in the Moira, specifically the Rambam, is that there's Ashkocha Klalis, a general providence, a general oversight over the entire creation. And with man himself, the human being himself, there's the possibility of Ashkocha Pratis. There's a possibility that the, this person will have divine providence in the particular aspects of their, of their life, which means that not only is, a, is an analogy of the owner, the, the employer, employee and the employer, in terms of their relationship of I need you to make these five sweaters, but also in terms of I need, I need to make sure that every single moment that you're doing this, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm observing and I'm very interested in the details of how you create it. So using this analogy would be like this. You have someone that works for you in a company, and the, the idea of the hashkacha, hashkacha of this divine providence, is like a sliding scale. That in the general macro picture of the entire creation, there's a general unfolding of creation that everything is moving towards the world of Yichah, toward, toward, towards the world of unity, towards the time of Mashiach. Everything is moving, everything is progressing. Now something seems to be moving down, something is moving up, but in the collective, in the general perspective, everything of creation is moving towards it's, it's, it's completion, it's, it's fullness, which is, a, which is in a messianic and a redemptive state. The particularities is not really relevant. 
like what this, the trees in general are giving of a certain oxygen, or whatever it has to be doing in the creation, and altogether it's allowing for the furtherance of creation to this perfect state. Now, if a particular leaf falls off or doesn't fall off, that doesn't really matter, so long as the tree itself is doing its, its purpose. With regards to the human being himself, that really, that's really a, slip, a, a, a sliding scale. A sliding scale means like this. The more a person is, participates in the unfolding of creation, in the analogy of, of a worker and an owner is if the, if the worker takes responsibility for their actions and says, I know my boss only wants I should make five sweaters a day, fine, but I can do this in three hours and I have so much extra time, so either I'm gonna make more sweaters for him because I have, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm invested, I have a vested interest in the success of the company, or during the time that I'm not doing it, I'm, just gonna, I'm not gonna lazy around, but I'm actually gonna to try to figure out ways how I can enhance the working of the company. Then when the, the employer sees this person, this individual, that they really care about the company, that it's not just they're doing their job and they're, they go home and they don't care about it, then they have a stronger invested interest also in the employee. So the relationship is symbiotic. Depending on the, on the involvement of the worker in the company, that's how much the owner of the company doesn't take interest, how much personal involvement he's taking in the company, that's how much interest the owner of the company is also gonna take in the person until, until eventually it becomes a point that it becomes a whole thing, I want you to become my partner. This is like a sliding scale, this is a way of an analogy of thinking about Ashkach Pratis specific divine providence in every single aspect of your life versus a very general unfolding that, in, that your life will have to get to a certain point. The general point of your life will have to get to a certain shleimus, a certain completion. And how you reach that place could be in this life, the next life, whatever, you're gonna eventually get there, that you will unfold to that, perf to that state of perfection. But if you take a vested interest in your life and you take a vested interest in the company and you say, Shutaf Lomai Sibirashi, you say, I'm actually a, a partner to Hashem in this creation and I have a vested interest in that world should be a better place, a holier place and to bring light into this world and I, I, I'm vested, I'm taking responsibility for the creation, then the response is that the owner of the company, Kaviyachol, the Balabais Labirazu, the owner of the company, the creator takes a deeper and more intimate interest in the specifics of your life. So not only generally is there hashkacha to the general perception of how your life is gonna unfold, but every single detail in your life has hashkacha, has divine providence. This is the way a lot of the early Rishayim, a lot of the early commentators understand and explain this idea of hashkacha. That providence is very general in creation, specific to man, and with the man himself who has who has the potential to have to to has the potential of, of free choice? That in itself is a sliding scale. It depends how much invested a person is invested in the creation. If a man slips to a place where he's not doing his free choice, he's not activating his free choice. He's living very from animalistic and a very rough behavior. So then he enters into the world of Ashkach Klalus in the general perception. This is the way it's understood. So this is what Rabbi Nachman is. Writing. This is what the author is writing in Sharpe That a person that is not b'yter Hashem. a person doesn't have trust in Hashem, a person has, doesn't have that relationship and that, that complete trust that there is someone, something, a higher force that is controlling and creating this beautiful symmetry and harmony within my, my life and every single detail is exactly the way it's meant to be. If a person doesn't live this way, not only have faith in this, but a person doesn't live this way, then the hashkacha leaves him that specific uh, intimate and detailed divine providence leaves the, leaves the person. This is the way it was understood, and what was not only the way it was understood, this is the way it was revealed in the world before the teachings of Torah Sachsit, before the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. Comes along the Baal Shem Tov, and this goes back to the Tzimtzum Kibshutai, not Kibshute, whether the Tzimtzum, the contraction is literal, not literal, but the, in the revealing the general one of the great revealings of the, this, of the, of the Torah, of the, of the teachings of Chassidus, is that there was a revelation that the Zashkacha Pratis, divine providence, not only on the human being, and not only the human being when he's acting in a particular way, but the Zashkacha Pratis on every single specific aspect of creation. That even a tiny leaf, 
that blows in the wind and instead of turning one direction, turns the other direction, that is divinely orchestrated into its minutia, into its tiny, smallest detail. This is the Ashkacha Pratis, the idea of divine providence and it's its smallest detail. So how do we, how do we read this? How do we read what it says in Shara B'tachan from a lens, from a lens of an understanding that there's Ashkacha Pratis, the divine providence, always? How do we read this? So one way to understand this, and from a, from a little bit of a deeper level, what it means, what, what the Chavis what Alvavis means, what the author means when he says that when a person doesn't live with trust, automatically from not having trust in Hashem, they end up trusting in human beings, we can understand it on a more subtle level as well, on a much more subtle level. And this is, in fact, what the, the way the Baal Shem Tov reads it. Not the, reading the Chavis Alvavis, but the way the Baal Shem Tov reads the idea of trust. So there's a teaching that's brought down by the grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, which is brought down to many svar, many chesedish svar, and um, that the teaching is like this. It's in Parshas Miketz, and it's in the Degel. It's a Degel in Mishalach, but it's based on the passing Miketz. Baruch HaGev Sheyiftcha B'Hashem, Ohi Hashem Yiftachai. So the Pasuk says, the verse says, which is the verse that, that um, the Chavis HaLavav is actually quotes here, Baruch Hashem Yiftach B'Hashem HaYishan V'Tachai, a Pasuk, a verse in Yirmiyo Yitzayin, in Jeremiah 17. This is the Pasuk. So the, here's the way the Baal Shem reads the Pasuk. Baruch Hashem Yiftach B'Hashem HaYishan V'Tachai, Baruch HaGever blesses the person, the individual, who trusts in Hashem, and Hashem is the source of his trust. So that's, a double statement. You could say, Baruch HaGavah blesses the person, Asher, Yiftu HaShem, who trusts in Hashem. What does it mean, Vahe Hashem Yiftachai, and Hashem will be his, his, his source of trust. That's what you just said. Baruch HaGavah, Asher, Yiftu HaShem, blesses the person that has, that has trust in Hashem. What does it then mean, Asher, Yiftu HaShem Yiftachai, and Hashem should be his source of his, his trust. So this is what, this is what the Baal Shem Tov teaches. Yesh b'teach, maftiach, muftach. There's the boiteach, there's the person that's having the trust, the individual. There is the individual who, the person that causes the trust. In this analogy, it would be Hashem. Hashem is the source of the trust. Unu muftach, and is the trust itself. Boiteach, and shu boiteach. Boiteach refers to the man, maftiach refers to Hashem. Muftach is the, the thing that he trusts in. So for example, you say like this. Hashem promises, that God promises that he would, he's going to give, Hashem will give everything what we need, exactly what we need. Hashem must be a whole high rats. Hashem gives everything in its in nature and its creation when they're doing the thing that they're supposed to be doing in, in terms of what they're created for, that they'll have everything that they need. And a person trusts. A person has trust in this idea. So a person has trust that everything he'll he'll he'll, he'll receive. So therefore, what does a person think? As he says, I have trust in Hashem. So what does that mean? That Hashem will certainly find for me the right livelihood, the right parnasa, in order for me to make a living. I trust that Hashem will, will allow me to make a living, to have enough food to feed myself and my family, and to put a house, and to put a roof over their, over their heads, etc. But I understand that my trust in Hashem is that Hashem will, get, will put into my life a certain scenario, a certain business, or maso a certain type of a certain type of business that will allow me to make money. Says the Baal Adam A person that does that didn't yet reach the highest level of trust. So, like this. If you say, "I trust in Hashem." that he's going, Hashem is going to feed me. 
I trust in Hashem that I'll have livelihood. Okay, that's, that's the analogy, that I'll have livelihood to live. But where is the trust? Where am I placing my trust in? I trust Hashem. But I'm saying that the, the, the job that I have or the, the new business venture that comes to me, this is the way Hashem is telling me that through, this is the medium, this is the vessel through which I receive the blessings of, of who I have trust in. So my trust is in Hashem, but there's an intermediary, ki'ilah, almost, as if saying, that my trust is in the, is in the infinite one, the potential of, of all giving, the source of all giving, the source of all blessing. And it's the form of it, the ilah of that, the way it's formed, it's formed in a particular business venture that I'm about to go into. It says the Baal Shem, this is not fully trust. To trust in Hashem, this is what it says, Baruch HaGevish Yifchub Hashem, Ahoy Hashem Miftachoy, blesses the person that has trust in Hashem, and Ahoy Hashem Miftachoy, and Hashem will be the source of his trust, means to trust only Hashem. And to say, There's nothing that's a cause for my, for my, for my livelihood. In other words, I trust Hashem. And I trust I'm going to make a livelihood. And I, I have this new venture, this new business venture, and I say, I trust on Hashem. And the reason why I have this new venture is because Hashem gave me this opportunity to make money through, let's say, through, let's say, real estate. Okay. So as a real estate deal comes up, I trust on Hashem that I'll, I'll receive the blessings to be successful in my life. Here's a real estate option that comes up. So I trust that Hashem gave me this vessel through real estate to make, to make money. Says about Hashem, then... Then you bar together, Then the truth is that you're blessed, you're a blessed person because you trust in Hashem. But it's not Vahoy Hashem of Tacha. You don't put your trust completely in Hashem. You're saying that I trust Hashem, and there's a medium through which the blessings of Hashem comes from, and that medium is real estate. It says the ultimate idea of trust in Hashem is to trust only in Hashem. To say that really Hashem's blessing can come to me in an infinite amount of ways. And it doesn't need any type of achana, any type of, of vessel. So even when you do have the vessel, let's try, let's try to understand this like this. There's two ways how to look at this way, and it's a subtle difference, but it's a it's a it's a major difference. The person says like this: I'm struggling with with finances. Let's say that's the analogy, because that's the analogy that Al Shem gives. I'm struggling financially, and um, I have trust that it's going to work out. One day, a certain business venture comes up, and the business venture is real estate. And I say, okay, this is Hashem showing me. This is the belt, this is the vessel, this is the cleat, this is the vessel through which you see the blessing. And now Hashem's gonna give you the blessing through this real estate deal. If you do that, and that's the level of your trust, then there's a limitation to the vessel that you're going to receive because the, for the blessings that you're gonna receive through this vessel, because now you're saying it's that the, the infinite potential, the infinite source of blessing has a very specific form through which I receive the blessing. And where, how am I going to receive the blessing? Specifically through that real estate deal. And maybe the real estate deal, if, if it's going to really work out, and it's going to be unbelievable, and it's going to work the best possible way, so it's, I can make even, I don't know, $100 million. Okay, but that's, even if you say that, there's still a cap. You say in the best possible scenario, in the best possible way, in the most miraculous way, I can take you know hundred thousand dollars and I can turn it to hundred million dollars, or I can take a thousand dollars and turn it to hundred thousand dollars, possible, because that's the way through this medium of this investment. I put my money in this particular stock, and the stock goes completely in the in the wildest place that I can, can't even imagine, and I can make a hundred times my money. Okay, so you trust in Hashem, but you're trusting that the blessing is coming from this specific thing. That's one way of thinking about it. The other way of thinking about it is not that you don't do you don't you don't make a vessel, and you don't put your you don't try to invest and you don't try to do a business. That's not what the Balsham. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, of course, you do that, but you recognize that what you really trust is not that the 
the real estate market is going to go so much up that I'm going to make 100 times more money, that the stock is going to go so crazy in such a wild way that I'm going to make 1,000 times what I invested. My trust is not in the stock and not in the real estate. My trust is in Hashem. The medium through which I trust Hashem is through that real estate thing. So therefore, I'm not limiting myself to the particularities of that surah, that form of, of blessing. And I say, Hashem, yeah, you, you put me in a condition now that you put me into a, a space that I can do this real estate deal. And through this real estate, I can make a lot of money. But I know that I trust you. And my connection is really with you. I'm not b'teich b'zulase. I don't put my trust in anything else besides you. And therefore, since I'm connected to you, which is infinite, infinite possibilities are still possible. Maybe it's through the form of real estate, but maybe in the form of real estate, this gives an analogy. Through the real estate, you're going to meet someone else. And because of that, you can do something else. Because of the other thing, you do the third thing. I'm not limiting myself into this particular thing. I'm not saying, how much could this business deal create and use my wildest imagination and say, that is the cap. There is no cap. If Hashem is infinite, then the blessings could be infinite. And we're just talking about money as, 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 a, as a metaphor. And happiness and joy and nachas from the children. Whatever, you, whatever you're looking for in, the, in this world, whatever you should deserve and you should receive all these divine blessings. That you're, you put your trust in Hashem and your trust is only in Hashem. All you trust is Hashem. And you're connected to something infinite, to the source, to the Makar Abrachas, to the source of all blessings. I, you're going to make, even though you're going to make a particular vessel through which you receive the blessing, but you say, I'm not looking at it and saying, I trust Hashem and I trust that this real estate market is going to go so, so unbelievably that I make a tremendous amount of money. I trust Hashem and I trust Hashem that the blessings are going to come through. I don't know how. It's a hechetim, so it's just a matter of that's the way it comes through, or it comes through, it'll come through a different thing. But my trust is only in HaKadosh Baruch only in Hashem. When a person trusts only in Hashem, only in Hashem, and the, that's the only ilah, that's the only source. I trust Hashem and I trust only in Hashem that the, the way it's going to come through is only through Hashem. So even though it comes through this mask or that mask or that, that form or that form, it doesn't really matter because I'm connected to something infinite and therefore I'm always connected to the, to the source of infinity of something that's infinite or the source of infinity and therefore my blessings can always be revealed to me in an infinite way. And I'm never stuck to say, oh, I'm struggling with, with, with livelihood and then I met this other person, therefore it's a good business deal, and therefore I see that the blessings have come through this deal. Yes, maybe it will, but my trust is not in the business deal itself. My trust is actually in Hashem, only in Hashem, even while the business deal is happening. So I don't know how the blessings are going to materialize. I imagine that it's probably going to materialize if I'm doing a real estate deal, if that's what I'm doing now, it's probably going to materialize in that way. But I don't know, because that's, I'm not putting my trust in, in the real estate market. I'm putting my trust always, always in Hashem. And this is, this is a rereading of the, if the, what, what it says in the Chayv Salav Avos, what, what he says in Shara B'Tav. What is he saying? There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's no longer hashkacha on this person. What does it mean that there's no longer hashkacha? Of course, there's hashkacha pratis. It means that now you're, you're tied to a specific thing instead of being connected to something that's infinite, to the infinite one. And therefore, you're the source of the blessings. And you're always connected to something infinite and receive infinite blessings. Now you're, particular, you're connected to a particular form and you're, you're defining it. You're limiting it. You're saying, this is the way I see it. I, I want to receive blessings for health and this is the way I perceive it. The procedure is going to go well. You know, uh, the, the person is sick and, and, and they're going to go through an operation and that's the way they're going to be healed. Maybe. And maybe the, the disease is completely disappear. Maybe something else is going to happen. The trust is only in Hashem. And even if you do the, and you have to do the ishtalos, you have to do the participation, but the participation is just a way, but you're always a way to do something in this world, but your trust is always in Hashem. And because your trust is always in Hashem, and an infinite one, the, the blessings is always infinite and always connected to the source of infinity. And that's why you're not mashkiach. You're not taking away the ashkacha from you. And there's always the ashkacha, always the divine providence of the infinite one in every particular aspect of your life.